श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ नंद परम शिवोहम द गुरु गीता हियर नाउ द हिम द गुरु गीता संग बाय लॉर्ड शिवा इट सिंग्स द सॉन्ग ऑफ द सुप्रीम सेल्फ मैनिफेस्टिंग एज द गुरु द मंत्रास दैट आर द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल स्पीच पावर एंड स्टेबल स्ट्रेंथ आर इट्स फाउंडेशन Repeat this hymn each day to obtain the Guru's grace. Meditate on the Guru as seated in the crown of the head, surrounded by the sacred mantras Ham and Sa, which abide in all beings and that are the cause of the universe. The Guru, the source of the universe, freely chooses to appear in living form on earth. Meditate on the feet of the Guru, who is Shiva. who reveals the supreme truth as the lamp removes darkness who is eternal all pervasive and who is the visible form of the imperishable the guru gita begins on the summit of mount kailash the crest jewel of all mountains the axis of devotion and the abode of oneness the goddess parvati shiva's royal consort reverently bowed to him and said Salutations to you, O Lord, God of gods, who is higher than the highest, O Guru of the universe, eternally auspicious one, great Lord, initiate me into the knowledge of the Guru. Please teach me the surest way for the embodied soul to become one with the absolute. At your feet I pray, show your compassionate grace to me. O dear goddess, You are my very self because I love you I will speak your question which has never been asked before will be helpful for all creation in the entire universe there is no knowledge more subtle and elusive listen as i reveal this truth to you apart from the guru there is no other brahman oh beautiful one what i say is true it is the truth The wisdom of the highest scriptures, the doctrines of all sacred texts, the epics of the gods and the wise sagas of life, the science of mantras, yantras and so on, powerful incantations, the wisdom passed to each generation, the sacred teachings of those who worship the absolute as the divine father or mother and other revered works. All these doctrines and creeds only bring the downfall of those whose minds are restless and deluded. Those who offer sacrificial rites, make vows, repeat mantras, or engage in penance, pilgrimages, or charity, still go adrift without knowing the nature of the Guru. The Guru is not different from pure, unbounded consciousness. the self this is the truth without a doubt this is the truth knowing this the wise ceasingly strives to realize the true nature of the guru for the embodied soul knowledge of the self is veiled by a false perception of the world born of ignorance the one by whose light self realization arises is known by the name guru All harmful desires and past deeds will be completely washed away by service at the feet of the guru. Thus, the embodied soul becomes one with the supreme. Have no doubt, the words I speak to you are true and carry the grace that liberates one from ignorance and suffering. To obtain all the benefits of bathing in all places of pilgrimage, sprinkle pure water on your head. with the mind focused on the guru's lotus feet water from the ceremonial bathing of the guru's feet dries the mire of sins brings forth the radiance of intuitive insight and perfectly delivers one across the ocean of worldly illusions it washes away ignorance 
and puts an end to rebirth and karmas. Therefore, one should drink the water of the Guru's feet to obtain non-attachment and self-realization. Drink the holy water of the Guru's feet. Take the food that the Guru leaves to eat. Always meditate on the Guru's form. Constantly repeat the mantra the Guru has given. Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Any place where the Guru dwells is the holy land of Kashi. The water that washes the Guru's feet is the Ganges, Ganga. The Guru is the Lord of the universe, perceptible to the eyes. Indeed, the Guru is Brahma, the Savior. Water that has been poured over the Guru's feet is the pilgrimage site, Gaya. It is the holy banyan tree, it is the Akshaya, and Prayag, the meeting place of the sacred Ganges, Yamuna, and the Saraswati rivers. Salutations again and again to the Guru. Always lovingly recollect the Guru's divine form. Constantly repeat the mantra the Guru has given. Follow the Guru's guidance with your mind absorbed on nothing other than the Guru. The supreme knowledge that resides in the mouth of the Guru can be attained by the Guru's grace alone. Keep your Guru ever-present in your heart, just as a devoted wife keeps her husband there. With your heart absorbed in nothing but the Guru, let go of attachments to your status as a student, spouse, parent, and to your social standing, fame, and cravings for accumulating wealth. It is true that those who direct all thoughts to me alone achieve the highest state. This supreme state can also be attained by wholehearted worship of the Guru, who is Shiva manifest in the human form. From every corner of the universe, declarations of knowledge burst forth from gods, their rivals, or from departed souls, but supreme knowledge resides on the tongue of the Guru, and through devotion to the Guru, it is obtained. Gu is the symbol for darkness, Ru the remover of darkness. The Guru is supreme knowledge indeed, the swallower of darkness. Gu is the symbol for ignorance born of misperception. Ru is the supreme knowledge that destroys ignorance. Thus, the feet of the Guru are the highest goal, even difficult for the gods to attain. Indeed, even celestial musicians and their followers worship the Guru's feet. For them and for everyone, there is surely no truth higher than the Guru. Therefore, the seeker of truth should offer seats, beds, clothes, ornaments, vehicles, and other things to the Guru's needs. Offer anything that pleases the Guru. More than that, offer your life by continuously serving the Guru in thought, word, and deed. Prostrate fully in front of the Guru without the least reservation. Dedicate your body, senses, and life force to the Guru. When you consecrate everything you call yours, even your spouse and your very self, in the name of the Guru, it is blessed. O beautiful one, do not hesitate to live for the sake of the Guru and the teachings. Those who live for the pursuit of pleasures should remember that the body is transitory, the residence of germs, foul waste, toxins and phlegm, and is reduced to ashes in the end. Those who venture onto the tree of this fleeting world of change sink into the ocean of torment at the end of their lives. Salutations to the Guru, who surely saves all devotees from this fate. The Guru is Brahma, the Guru is Vishnu, the Guru is Shiva. Indeed, the Guru is the Supreme Absolute. To that Guru, I offer my reverent salutations. 
The Guru is the cause of the universe, the bridge to cross over the ocean of change, and the source of all knowledge. Salutations to the Guru, who is Shiva. Salutations to the Guru, who with the pultis of knowledge opens the eyes of the one who is blinded by the darkness of ignorance. The Guru, who is the father, mother, family, and divine light of devotees, bestows realization of the limitations of worldly existence. Salutations to the Guru. My reverent salutations to the Guru, who is the embodiment of the Absolute Truth, the light by which that truth is perceived and whose bliss reveals joy to all. Salutations to the Guru, whose existence brings truth to all beings, through whose form the Divine Light, like the light of the sun, shines on everyone, and in whose unconditional love we come to love our family and all beings more and more. Salutations to the Guru, by whom this world is illumined, who perceives all states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, and dreamless sleep, but who cannot be perceived by the mind. Salutations to the Guru, who is truth, whose knowledge of the universe sees through the illusory divisions that splits into fragments, and who perceives no distinction between the universe and the self. Those who say they don't know the Absolute, know it. Those who say they know the Absolute, know it not. Salutations to the Guru, whose mind is ever absorbed in the Absolute. Salutations to the Guru, who is the cause of the universe, although appearing as an effect. In truth, the Guru is both the cause and effect. Salutations to the Guru, who reveals that this universe of countless forms is in fact one undifferentiated whole, a play of cause and effect in which cause and effect are one. Prostrations to the Guru, whose lotus feet eradicate the suffering brought by duality and who always protects seekers from all misfortunes and calamities. If Shiva is angry with you, the Guru can save you, but if the Guru becomes angry with you, even Shiva cannot save you. Therefore, by all means, take refuge in the Guru. I offer my reverent praise and honor to the Guru's radiant feet, where devotees, speech, mind, and intellect dwell, and which are the supreme manifestation of the spirit and nature. The syllable Gu is that which is beyond the Gunas, the subtle forces of creation. Ru is that which is beyond Rupa, all forms in creation. The one who bestows the state beyond all forces and forms is said to be the Guru. O oh, dear one, though without three eyes, the Guru is Lord Shiva, the witness of all. Though without four arms, the Guru is Lord Vishnu, the preserver. Though without four faces, the Guru is Lord Brahma, the creator. This the scriptures declare. I make these salutations with folded hands to immerse myself in the ocean of mercy that is the Guru, because it is by the Guru's grace that a being is liberated from this universe of ceaseless change and the ever-turning wheel of birth and death. The supreme form of the Guru is the nectar of immortality to one who has eyes of discrimination, but like the blind cannot see the sunrise, those who are idle, sluggish or indifferent are unfortunate for they cannot perceive this divine form. O oh, dear one, every day and with all devotion, one should offer full prostrations in the direction where the holy feet of the Guru abide. O oh, noble one, the wise and the learned always offer handfuls of the sweetest, most fragrant flowers in the direction of the revered and blessed one, the Guru, who is free, fully awakened, and the witness of the eternal drama 
of the creation and dissolution of the universe. The Guru resides in the center of the sacred mandala surrounded by the Guru's spiritual lineage, Shiva, Lord of the demigods and dissolver of the universe, the three holy mountains where resides the essence of the Divine Mother, the two principal qualities of the Supreme Lord, the power of manifestation and the power of self-awareness, the goddesses who destroy intolerance, limitation, selfishness and ignorance, perfected saints and sages, the great heroes and heroines of renown who are triumphant in the battle over evil, who lend their protection in the performance of sacred rituals and who help overcome fear, the sounds they have the power to create and the highest mantras Salutation to all those luminaries who attend to the Guru. What is the use of undeveloped seekers spending so much time practicing hundreds of rounds of long deep breaths in order to regulate the life force? These exercises can be uncomfortable and are difficult to master. Indeed, such unguided practice can disperse the life force, causing disorders. Instead, just serve your Guru constantly and you will attain mastery over the life force, naturally and spontaneously. It will become regulated on its own accord. To contemplate the form of your Guru is to contemplate infinite Shiva. Truly, whenever you utter your Guru's name, it is the same as chanting the name of Lord Shiva. Even a few of the smallest specks of dust from the Guru's feet form a bridge strong enough to cross the ocean of fleeting worldly existence. That Supreme Guru we honor, serve and worship. Upon receiving the Guru's benevolent grace, one should turn away from the ways born of ignorance and humbly open one's heart to the highest master to attain the most valued of wishes, self-realization. At the crown of the head, the gateway to Brahman, in the center of the bright lotus, illumined by a circle of moonlight, are the lotus feet of the Guru, which destroy the raging fires of worldly existence. Reflect on the Guru as seated in the center of a thousand-petaled lotus at the heart of the sacred triangle, the mantras of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva ring out from its corners, that of the transcendent self on either side. The Guru's glance creates all the worlds, makes everything flourish completely and perceives the essence of all holy scriptures. It perceives that wealth does not lead to liberation and it purifies devotees of all deficiencies. The Guru's vision beholds the Self in the midst of ever-changing nature and illumines the path to liberation. The Guru's glance is the pillar that supports the stage where all worlds are exhibited. It showers the nectar of compassion. It is the sum total of creation, evolution and dissolution. The Guru's glance creates past, present and future and bestows the wisdom of Sat, Chit, Ananda, Truth, Knowledge and Absolute Bliss. May the Guru's Divine Grace always be on me. O oh dear Parvati, I consider the word Guru to be the king of all mantras. Pure as gold, refined in fire, it has been thoroughly confirmed by reason, meditation, prayer and intellect. It protects one from death, day and night. The Guru moves, but he is ever still. He is far away, yet near, both inside as well as outside of all things. Know that this is the consciousness the Guru experiences. I have no birth, I am ageless, without beginning or end. 
I am endless consciousness and bliss. I am smaller than the smallest, larger than the largest. I am the supreme unseen primal cause, eternal, self-luminous, without taint or craving. I exist beyond the limitations of space, immovable, blissful, imperishable. Gain knowledge of the Guru's divine nature through the revealed wisdom of the scriptures. Direct perception, born of a clear, focused mind, the revered teachings passed on by tradition and by inference, and by always being mindful of the Guru's guidance. O great soul, Parvati, seeing that holiness resides in you, I will speak to you now of the nature of the Guru, upon which one should always reflect. Salutations to the Guru, who reveals the sacred universe in its fullness, permeated by all animate and inanimate objects. Salutations to the Guru, whose lotus feet are adorned with the most splendid jewels of wisdom from the highest scriptures, who is the sun whose light causes the lotus of knowledge to bloom into self-realization. By even a moment of loving remembrance of the Guru, wisdom arises spontaneously. Without doubt, loving recollection of the Guru fulfills all goals. Salutations to the Guru. Salutations to the Guru, who is pure eternal consciousness and peace, who is without flaw, beyond the limitations of space and time, who is the primordial sound and the source of creation. Truly, the Guru pervades all that changes and all that does not, all that is animate and all that is not. Salutations to that Guru. Salutations to the Guru, who, adorned with the garland of the highest truth, rides the power of knowledge and brings enjoyment in this life as well as liberation. Salutations to the Guru, who incinerates the karma of countless lives through the power of self-realization. Salutations to the Guru. There is no truth greater than the Guru. There is no path of self-discipline greater than service to the Guru. No knowledge higher than knowledge of the Guru. Cherish these thoughts while offering salutations to the Guru. My Guru is the support and protector of the universe and master of every plane of existence. Myself is the self of all beings. The root of meditation is the Guru's form, the root of worship, the Guru's feet, the root of mantra, the Guru's words, the root of freedom, the Guru's grace. Salutations to the Guru, who has no beginning, but is the origin of all, the supreme transcendent deity. There is nothing higher than the Guru. The merit gained through baths and other sacred activities in the holy waters of the seven seas can easily be attained in one thousandth of a drop of water from the Guru's feet. If you alienate Shiva, who is the remover of faults and ignorance, by your mistakes the Guru will save you. But if you are alienated from the Guru, no one can save you. Therefore, with all efforts, take refuge in the Guru. There is nothing higher than the Guru. Indeed, the Guru is the entire universe, comprised of the qualities of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Therefore, one should worship the Guru. There is nothing higher than the Guru. Through devotion to the Guru, one attains knowledge as well as the wisdom that liberates. Therefore, for those who tread the path of devotion, the Guru is the perfect object of contemplation. Nothing exists which is higher than the Guru. Indeed, the scriptures proclaim 
that if the mind meticulously analyzes every particle of creation, it can never fathom the fullness of the Guru. Truly, one should always venerate the Guru with thought and speech. It is purely by the Guru's grace that Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva gain the capacity to guide the creation, sustenance and dissolution of the universe. Perfection comes by serving the Guru. Sages, gods, demigods, celestial musicians, spirits of the ancestors of the human race, spirits that attend the gods, and spirit beings who exist to praise the gods do not know the proper manner of serving the Guru. Like pots on the potter's wheel, even ascetics, renunciates, and those with profound knowledge and self-discipline continue to spin in the emptiness of the world of change. Departed spirits of ancestors, great heroes, seers, adepts who possess supernatural powers or who have achieved mastery over the senses and their objects, even gods, demigods, and the celestial musicians who attend them cannot be free from the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth if they turn their faces from serving the Guru. O Supreme Goddess, listen to the method of meditating on the Guru who bestows all joys, grants all pleasures, and all worldly fulfillments as well as liberation. I remember the Guru, who is the Supreme Brahman. I speak to the Guru, who is the Supreme Brahman. I bow to the Guru, who is the Supreme Brahman. I serve the Guru, who is the Supreme Brahman. I bow to the truth-bearing Guru, who is the bliss of Brahman, who bestows the highest joy, who is one without a second, the embodiment of wisdom beyond duality, who is infinite like the sky, who exemplifies the great Vedantic proclamations such as Tattomasi, thou art that, who is one, eternal, pure, unshakable, the witness of all minds, beyond all changes, and who is free from bonds of nature. I bow to the Guru, who is Brahman, eternal and pure, who is beyond perception and form, and without taint, who is infinite knowledge, consciousness and bliss. Meditate on the divine form of the Guru, seated on the throne in the center of the lotus of the heart. Here, at the axis of the womb of countless universes, the Guru, adorned with the jewel of transcendental consciousness, shines like the crescent moon dripping the nectar of immortality and fulfills all righteous requests. Visualize the Guru in white garments, anointed with pure fragrant ointment and adorned with flowers and pearls. With eyes that radiate joy, the Guru's gentle smile is a treasure house overflowing with grace. To the left, the goddess Shakti abides. Seated close by, her garment gently touches the Guru. I always bow to the Guru, who exudes bliss, who is pure and bright, whose nature is knowledge, and who is awake to the true Self. Lord of Yogis, adorable and worthy of worship, the Guru is the physician who can cure the disease of the countless cycles of birth death and rebirth. I bow to the Guru, in whom the eternal cosmic processes of creation, sustenance, dissolution, regulation and grace are present. As you arise each morning, repeat the Guru's mantra with your mind fixed at the crown of your head. There, the Guru, the two-eyed, two-armed God of peace, abides, seated on a white lotus, granting the boon of fearlessness.
There is nothing greater than the Guru. Nothing greater than the Guru. Nothing greater than the Guru. There is nothing greater than the Guru. This is the doctrine of Shiva, the teaching of Shiva, the declaration of Shiva. This is the solemn word of Shiva. The Guru is Shiva, without a doubt. The Guru is Shiva. The Guru truly is Shiva. Be assured, the Guru is Shiva. By my authority, I proclaim this. This is my teaching. This is my doctrine. This is my creed. By meditating on the Guru in this manner, supreme knowledge bursts forth spontaneously. Therefore, one should cultivate this understanding. I am liberated by the grace of the Guru. One should purify the mind by following the path shown by the Guru. Do not cling to things that are transient, which you have imagined to be qualities of the self. The essential nature of objects and the knower of objects, the mind, are worthy of being known. One should reflect on the truth that objects of awareness and awareness are identical. There is no other way to liberation. O great goddess, those whom scorn the Guru, even after hearing these teachings, go to a place of dreadful torments for as long as the sun and the moon exist. Keep the Guru's mantra, teaching and spiritual presence in mind through the duration of every birth. Indeed, until creation's end, one should never forget the Guru, even if one attains self-realization. Wise disciples should never utter what is not completely true or speak discourteously or with disrespect in front of the Guru. Those who speak to the Guru with egoism or anger or engage in arguments with the Guru will lose what wisdom they have gained. They will be reborn in a waterless land with no interest in higher truths, or as spirits who oppose the truth, or who are adversaries of humanity. O Parvati, the Guru protects one from malicious interference from envious ascetics, heretics, and even gods. The Guru also safeguards one from fear at the time of death. Even the gods, ascetics, and other beings that have the power to curse are powerless in the presence of the Guru. There is no doubt that their malicious interference ends and they soon perish by the intervention of the Guru. O Goddess, the two-syllable word Guru is the king of all mantras. It is the essence of the highest scriptures and sacred wisdom and leads to the highest state. Indeed, those who are devoted servants of the Guru can be regarded as true renunciates even if they are ignorant of the scriptures. All others are merely wearing renunciates robes. Just as one lamp lights another, the Guru awakens knowledge of the eternal imperceptible Brahman, who appears as everything in creation but is itself without form or attributes. Perceive the joyous self through the gift of the Guru's grace. Knowledge of the self arises through this path. I bow to the Guru who is the creative power of the universe and who permeates the entire universe. All that moves, all that is unmoving, from a blade of grass to the highest self. I always bow to the Guru, who is existence, knowledge and bliss, who is beyond all multiplicity, eternal, complete, without form, without attributes, and who abides in the Self. Meditate on the Guru, who is beyond all beyonds and the bestower of bliss, as residing in the center of your heart, pure and bright as crystal. Have no doubt that as the image of a crystal is reflected in a mirror, so also 
reflected in a tranquil, clear and one-pointed mind is the bliss of the self. Experience this as that supreme bliss I am. Listen as I describe the state that arises when meditating on the self. Reflect on it as all-pervading knowledge and light, the size of a thumb residing in the heart. I am beyond any efforts of conceptualization. I am not attainable by the mind. I am without name, form and sound. O Parvati, know this as Brahman, one's true nature. As the fragrance of flowers and camphor is natural to them, as cold and heat are natural phenomena, so is eternity natural to Brahman. Having become one with Brahman, one may abide anywhere, firm in that realization. Just as a larva unfold their true nature, as bees, by incessantly meditating on the nature of a bee, one who meditates on the Guru as Brahman becomes Brahman. Meditating on the Guru in this manner, the disciple becomes one with Brahman and is liberated from Pinda, Pada and Rupa, the force of creation, the movement of the life force and the matter. There is no doubt about this. Parvati then asked, O great Lord, please further define for me Pinda, Pada and Rupa. And what is beyond Rupa? Please explain this to me, O great Lord, source of bliss. Shiva said, Pinda is the latent power of evolution within. Pada is breath of the life force. And Rupa the subtle cause of all physical forms. Beyond Rupa is Brahman, the pure. O beautiful one, one experiences liberation when the divine creative power within is fully awakened, when the life force becomes utterly still and when one can hear within the mantra of the transcendental self, Hamsa, repeating itself. One no longer identifies with the physical form and is liberated. By those who go beyond even all these are truly free. Having become one with all there is, one can perceive the highest truth. There is nothing greater than the highest. All that exists has no other abode. On having caught sight of the highest truth by the Guru's grace, one should resolutely continue, maintain a tranquil, balanced mind and completely let go of all cravings and attachments. Whatever you acquire or do not acquire, whether it is great or small, enjoy it with a mind that is contented and without cravings. The awakened one say that having attained the all-knowing state, the embodied soul becomes one with everything. Ever blissful and tranquil, such a one rejoices everywhere. Moreover, wherever the knower of Brahman lives, that place becomes a vessel for all that is auspicious, good and holy. O Goddess, thus, I have described to you the characteristics of a liberated being. I have also explained to you the proper course for knowing the true nature of the Guru. And I have fully explained how devotion to and meditation on the Guru bestows liberation. O Great Self, I shall now speak on what can be accomplished by recitation of the Guru Gita. This song is not meant for obtaining fleeting worldly gains, but to bring the highest benefit to all beings in all the worlds. Those who strive for worldly gains 
and who lack insight sink into the ocean of worldly limitations and transitory existence. But knowers of the highest truth are not bound by their actions, whatever they may be. But if one reads or hears this Guru Gita with an attitude of devotion, or if one even makes a copy of it and offer it to another, it produces all fruits. O Goddess, I have revealed to you the song of the Guru, the existence of pure truth. Without a doubt, regular repetition of this song destroys the disease of transitory existence. Repeat the Guru Gita in which every letter, every sound, every syllable is imperishable, radiant and powerful. It is the highest of all mantras. All other mantras are not worth even one sixteenth part of one letter of the Guru Gita. Infinite and endless are the rewards obtained by repeating the Guru Gita. Bondage from all past wrongdoings is destroyed and all hardships come to an end. There is no doubt about this. It removes the fear of time and death and all misfortune. It erases the fear of ghosts, demons, evil spirits, thieves and wild beasts. It destroys powerful, resistant diseases, bestows all prosperity and makes perfection possible. More importantly, it subdues ignorance, repeat it always. Repeating it while seated on cloth brings lack, on stone, disease, on earth, unhappiness, and on wood, it becomes useless. Repeating it while seated on a black deer skin, one attains knowledge, while on a tiger skin, the treasure of liberation. Sitting on sacred kusha grass brings wisdom, and a seat of wool brings all attainments. O Goddess, repeat this song with one pointed mind on an auspicious seat covered with a pure, spotless wool blanket. O oh, beloved, one should use a white seat for attaining peace, a red one for self-control, a black one to eliminate malvoyant spirits, and a yellow one to attract wealth. Repeat the Guru Gita facing north to attain peace, east for self-control, face south to destroy all adversities, west to attain prosperity. The Guru Gita has the power to enthrall all creatures and to liberate them from bondage. One becomes the beloved of gods and rulers. All planes of existence become one's dominion. It has the power to subdue harmful attributes while increasing beneficial ones. Destroy the fruit of pain-bearing deeds while bringing forth the fruits of deeds that are painless. It brings to perfection all righteous acts. It removes the fear of the influence of the planets, destroys bad dreams and makes good dreams come true. It bestows the highest peace under all circumstances grants righteous children to the barren, averts widowhood and brings good fortune. It grants long life, good health, wealth, children and grandchildren. A widow who repeats the Guru Gita without selfish desire gains liberation. Even if she repeats it while harboring desire, she obtains non-widowhood in the next birth. All fears, suffering and obstacles will be destroyed. All malicious interference will be removed. It brings tranquility where obstacles and torment one prevailed. 
it grants prosperity, the fulfillment of virtuous desires, righteousness and liberation. Without a doubt, one definitely obtains all that one could desire. The Guru Gita is the wish-fulfilling cow for those who desire objects, the wish-fulfilling tree for those who cherish all that can be imagined, and the wish-fulfilling gem for those disturbed by anxious thoughts. The Guru Gita creates auspiciousness in every way and for everyone. For those whose goal is liberation, who repeat it daily, the radiance of liberation will be attained. Those who repeat it, desiring enjoyments, will no doubt also attain the fruits of their desires. The Guru Gita is repeated by devotees of the Divine Mother, the Sun God, Lord Ganesha, Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva. O Goddess, it brings all attainments, without a doubt. This is the truth, what I say is true. O Beautiful One, now I shall describe the place to repeat it to achieve that which is longed for at the sea, a river bank, or in a temple of Lord Vishnu or Lord Shiva. Or in a temple devoted to the Divine Mother. In any place made holy by worship of the Divine. In an ashram where cows reside. Under a holy banyan or gooseberry tree. In a garden of holy basil plants or in any pure, clean place, repeat the Guru Gita regularly, with your mind focused and at peace. By reciting the Guru Gita in a cremation ground or other places that inspire fear in most people, or near the root of a banyan or thorn apple tree, or close to a mango tree, one gains success. As children are cherished by their parents, so too are disciples loved and cared for by the Guru. Even those who are ignorant or dull reach perfection in all righteous actions, initiations, vows and challenging disciplines others cannot. The wise who understands the nature of life always bathe in the waters of the Guru Gita to wash away the impurities of this fleeting world of sense objects and desires, and to become free from the endless cycles of rebirth. The one whose knowledge of the Absolute Truth is constant and complete is truly the Guru. There is no doubt that wherever the Guru dwells becomes a holy place. The Guru remains pure, holy and immersed in self-realization in every place. Without a doubt, wherever the Guru stays, the multitude of gods also dwell. Recite the Guru Gita while seated in a meditation posture, while lying down, walking, standing, speaking, riding a horse or elephant whether attentive and with devotion, or distracted and without feeling. One who always repeats the Guru Gita is pure of mind and wise. By merely seeing such a one, rebirth is overcome. Just as the water of the river merges with the water of the ocean, as milk perfectly merges with milk, clarified butter with clarified butter, the space within a pot with the space outside it, so too the individual self merges with the Supreme Self. In this manner, the individual self of the wise one merges with the Supreme Self, day and night 
and in every location, the wise one delights in oneness. Thus, the awakened one always dwells in supreme freedom, existing as the embodiment of devotion and serving all. O Parvati, all doubts are left behind. Such a one, truly free, experiences both liberation and delight in this world. The goddess of speech and learning resides on the tip of the tongue of the realized soul. There is no doubt that anyone who repeats the Guru Gita will attain all spiritual accomplishments as well as worldly pleasures and liberation. All I have said is the truth, the knowledge I have revealed is real and worthy of being followed. O oh, beautiful one, all I have said is true. There is nothing like the Guru Gita, nothing like the Guru Gita. In all the sacred traditions, God, the Absolute Reality, is one. And to be steadfast in living a righteous life is one. To faithfully live by this truth is the highest self-discipline. But there is nothing higher than the Guru. No reality, no teaching higher than the Guru. Fortunate is the mother of one who has devotion to the Guru. Fortunate is the father and fortunate are the family and ancestors. Blessed, too, is the earth where the Guru dwells. O Goddess, such devotion is truly rare. The body, senses, vital life force, wealth, close and distant relatives, mother, father, family, O Goddess, have no doubt, the Guru is all these. O Goddess, mantra repetition, vows, and rigorous disciplines practiced through the millions of birth since the beginning of creation only bear fruit the moment the Guru is satisfied. Those who do not serve the Guru are unfortunate, even with knowledge and powers gained through rigorous disciplines. O oh, beautiful one, this is the truth. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, divine seers, ancestors and celestial musicians, singers of praise and protectors of wealth, even realized beings and great sages, none can succeed without the grace attained by serving the Guru. Those who constantly abide in devotion to the Guru have reached their highest place of pilgrimage. Without such devotion, traveling to sacred sites serves no purpose. O Goddess, all places of pilgrimage reside in the big toe of the Guru's foot. Abandon all unprincipled places and all actions that do not bring spiritual growth and recite the Guru Gita. One attains endless rewards and spiritual victory. It is not conductive to success to repeat this hymn in an environment that is inappropriate. One attains inferior fruits by reciting the Guru Gita when undertaking a journey or when facing danger from an enemy in battle, one attains success. At death, it brings liberation. For the devoted disciple, every endeavor at every location is completed. This doctrine, mysterious, subtle and hidden, that I have revealed to you, should not be disclosed casually to just anyone. Protect it with every effort. 
I have revealed it to you because you are dear to me. Our own divine sons, the gods, Lord Vishnu and others, they keep this in their minds but do not speak it aloud. What I have taught you is true. This teaching is true. This doctrine should only be revealed to ones whose mind is matured and fully ready to hear the truth. O beloved, my very self, impart this doctrine only to one who is endowed with faith and devotion. Never even think to impart the Guru Gita to one without devotion, a cheat, a rogue, a hypocrite, or one who lacks belief. The Guru Gita can rescue seekers from the constant flux of worldly illusions. This mantra is without fault and is worshipped by Brahma and the other gods. It eradicates adversity, pain, and the disease of endless rebirths. I bow to the highest mantra, the Guru Gita, which erases the greatest fear. Thus ends the Guru Gita, which occurs as a dialogue between Lord Shiva and the goddess Parvati in the later portion of the Skanda Purana. It is offered at the holy feet of the revered giver of light, the Guru. Om Nityananda Paramashivu